you guys find out. Um, all right, injuries. Um, Ray Ray McLeod, um, he got cleared, so he's limited. I mean, at least by the doctors to practice and everything. Oren Burks limited, Gibson limited, Huff limited, Kittle limited, Mason limited, Jake Mooney limited. Um, that's it. Can you confirm that uh, Nick Bosa has signed? Yes, yes. I can. Now? No, um, he's going to try to get here today, though. So hopefully he'll be on the field or Maybe. Maybe. I actually was preparing to talk to you guys about how I have nothing to tell you guys. And I was three minutes late because I just got told of the news. So obviously pumped up about it and try to hit him up after this and figure it out. But I know he's trying to get here as fast as possible. What kind of relief is this for you? Like, what, what were your thoughts as we were getting closer to, to game one here? Uh, not good thoughts. Um, so, but, you know, when it, you feel it's kind of. You don't. You try not to think about it much because it's not. It's not really in my control, and you just gotta let the process play itself out. Once um, it kind of went through the weekend, I just kind of got in my mind that we weren't playing with them. Um, so, because if I would have gone back and forth, that would have been miserable. So I just decided we weren't. Um, I think our team was ready to not, and we were, that was our mindset this way. And um, it was a hell of a bonus to just get told that coming in here. So we're obviously real excited about it. A realistic a amount of snaps for Sunday. Um, how many snaps are in the game? Uh, I'm just joking. Um, we got to see when he gets here. I know Nick will come in shape. I know he'll be good. Um, it'd be great if he could get in something today. I don't know when he's going to get here or where he's flying from. Um, but I know we'll, we'll, we'll be smart with it, and that'll be based off of these next two and a half practices. You've got plenty of stuff that you've got to take care of, but how much do you get involved? How much did you get involved generally in this specifically? Did you ever just say, hey, guys, let's just get this done? Um, what was your involvement? I mean, yeah, I always want to get it done, and that's I, that's how we feel too. Um, but I didn't get involved in this one at all. I try not to at all. Um, it's I mean, we kind of had an idea it was going to be like this. Um, I thought it would come to fruition sometime last week, and it didn't, which made me nervous, made me kind of move on with it just because I thought I had to. But I mean, we all knew Nick was going to get rewarded like he did. I don't know the exact details of it, but um, I knew it would be like that eventually. Um, our organization did, and I think Nick did, and I'm just glad we got it worked out on everyone's side because we love Nick. I think he loves being here, and um, he's definitely earned this, and he's going to earn it going forward, too. Did you literally just learn, or did you get the indication that things are getting closer and closer and it could pop in any second? No, I literally just learned. Yeah. What was the first thing you thought of when, when you heard that news? Um, since it was right before I came in here, it was, Corey, why are you wasting my time with these questions? Because they're not going to ask me these questions anymore. Um, so that was it. And now I'm really excited to go out there and have some other thoughts, uh, start talking to the coaches and things like that. But once this weekend ended, we kind of had to stop thinking that way. I mean, if you start half in, half out when you don't know, I mean, that can really and that can mess up a lot of the plans and things like that, get people in the wrong position. So we've kind of been just one track, just hoping it would work out, um, but ready for it not to. And the fact it did, um, obviously, everyone knows how pumped we are. No, you, Chris, Steve, have you, did you guys work on like a plan for what he was going to be doing in Florida in these weeks that he wasn't playing with the team? Is he doing D-line drills? What kinds of things was he doing? Do you know? Probably the same stuff he does every other day he's down there, which is stuff that he knows how to do for D-line. Um, Nick is a smart player in our scheme. It's not the most complicated thing for the D-line, um, but he's very good at it. So Nick's been on his own completely, and that's why I don't want to answer too much. I got to see when he gets here. but. Um, we've gotten to know Nick pretty well and kind of expect when he gets here to look and act and be in the same spot he's been since the day we met him. Is a corresponding move yet, or, is, or does that happen when he puts pen to paper? Or no, we yeah. haven't. I just, I just, I can't believe you guys know. I thought we were the only ones that know, so. Any question in this, at this point whether he's going to be in uniform on Sunday? Um, I mean, there is question because we haven't seen him, but I think you guys know how I'm talking. Have to be, you have to have a beer belly and be out of shape or something. That's which that's not in in Bosa's DNA. How big? I don't know if you just heard, but do you tell players? Do how, what do you do when you hear this? I um, yeah, I'd love to tell guys. They'd be excited. By the time I tell everyone, they'll probably think it's old news and ask why I don't get that. Everyone gets stuff a lot faster than that. So they all know I'm sure by now, and I know they'll be excited. How big picture you have a group of guys you have a veteran nucleus that's been around for a while a little older and then you have some young guys kind of emerging both is like right in the middle of that at 25 years old how, how important is it to have somebody like him who can set the standard for maybe kind of that next nucleus so to speak 
Um, I think it's huge. I feel like that's what we've been trying to do since we've gotten gotten here. I mean, we've had some free agents that we've gone and um, paid for. You know, it's, you know, I know we did Hargrave this year, and you go back to Mooney a couple of years ago. Um, but for the most part, you know, we got Trent in a trade. He'll ended up getting that after being here a year. Um, but that's that's the goal of how you want to do it. You want your players to see that. You hope you get the guys who play the right way and at a certain level, and you can reward them. And um, you know, I think it started with I want to go back to Fred and Debo and Kittle and all those guys and. Nick was either the year after them, right? I think the year after. So I like to have one each year. Have you seen guys following Nick's lead already in, in terms of like, you know, I aspire to that kind of, you know, the work ethic and the discipline and all those types of things? Um, I think it just, I think everyone's a product in their environment. So everyone thinks they are based off of people they're around. Um, and then when you get around different people or you you think you're one way or another, and then you see when someone like how Fred Warner comes in every day and works, you see how dedicated Bosa is to his craft, um, not just here, but year around. You see things like that from people you knew before you came. And I think that's just what makes everyone change. I mean, everyone has a certain standard. And then when you see other people at a higher standard who also play at a higher level, it kind of brings everybody up and um, shows you what it takes to be this good in this league, to make it this league. And when you have that ability to be in a situation like this, to be great. Uh, what are your guidelines for Moody to decide whether he plays? Um, just as long as he doesn't have a uh, uh, a setback. He's looking good now, and I feel good about him. And I'd be surprised if he's not there. So we'll keep going at the pace we're at. Um, as long as he doesn't have a setback, we should be all right. Uh, do you have the captains for the season? Uh, yes, we have. It was Armstead, Brock Purdy, George Kittle, Debo, Fred Warner, and Trent Williams. Brock being a, a, a captain pretty early in his career, like Trey wasn't. We're going to compare Trey wasn't last season. Did, did you want to see that? Is it important for you that, that your starting quarterback's a captain? It it really isn't to me. I. I thought about this when I became a head coach. I mean, when you think really hard about the captains and stuff, and it would be cool if there was just one on each, which I kind of like and stuff, but then it becomes a little bit of a popularity contest with the players. I never have to want to get involved and tell them I disagree or anything. So I always just get their top guys. I have them all vote for four people. You get a first place, second place, third place, and fourth place vote. Um, I get the top eight, and then you decide off of that. Um, and we went one through six. and. I think the most we've kept is seven before, but um, you know, there's lots, there's a lot more than six guys on our team who could do it, and so that's why it's kind of thing I try not to make too big a de deal about because um, you're going to offend someone on your team. Do you see him as a leader? Yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, that's, I mean, I definitely do. It's when you go out and you play like he did last year. That's what it is. I mean, it's hard to be seen as a leader when you haven't been out there before. Um, guys can think you're a leader. Um, you can act like a leader. But guys don't follow many people who don't produce on the field. And I think that's why he got so many votes this year, because I think they believed in him and felt he was one of the leaders last year, not because he's being some vet and talking to guys a certain way, just because of how he prepares, that they can count on him, and how he handled a number of situations when he got in there. What does this say about Debo, too? Like, after he admittedly wasn't what he should have been last year? I think year. it says a ton. I think um, it says how I was happy for Debo he got that. I think he was disappointed he didn't last year. Um, I know he was. And for him to be one of those guys, um, especially how last year ended a little bit for him, I think it shows how dedicated he's been. You guys have seen it out on the field, and you guys have written about it and stuff, and um, players feel it strongly also. Uh, one on Pittsburgh's defense, uh, what do they look like on film? What's a, the traits of a Terrell Austin, Mike Tomlin defense? Like um, they. Um, they play as hard as anyone. Um, their D-line, their linebackers, their secondary, they all get after it. And they're an extremely physical group. We haven't played them for a number of years, but I mean, just watching um, Hayward, um, watching Watt, Minka, I mean, those guys, not only are they as, they're as talented as it gets, but the mindset they play with, the effort they play with. Um, you know, when, you're, when you don't see a team for a while, because, you know, not being the AFC, and it's been like three, three, four years since we've gone against them. You don't know how where they've come, and it's very obvious why they won seven out of the last nine games. It's just watching the defense side of the ball and then get into their offense, seeing some of the players they have and the way that quarterback's been playing and the way he played last year at the end of the year. Uh, it's been real impressive. You're more of a realist. John Lynch seems a little bit more like he's a little bit more positive. Did you guys, did that help you throughout this process? I love said that. I'm not a <laughs> negative guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this whole process with Nick Bosa, that he's kind of seems more eternally positive. Um, I prepared myself from the beginning. 
so I never was expecting it right away, so I, which helps me stay more positive. Um, so it's, yeah, I got a little different in these last couple of days, um, but I haven't been doing it for a while. Um, John, John has the personality for this stuff. He does a good job with it. I know it's been hard because uh, I know how bad John bleeds in Nick and wanted him here for our team. Um, so I know how much stressed he was feeling that pressure to try to get it done, not only him, but Prague and, and Hamp. Um, and I could tell when they walked in my door right before I came in here on their face and really just their energy that they had got it done because it was um, it was weighing on them a little bit. It was important to get him in here, just not for us to just have a better chance to win, but because the person we know and how big of a part of the team he is for us. How long would they have been allowed to stay in the office if they hadn't gotten it done? If they what? If they hadn't gotten it done and they came in. It wouldn't have been very long. Well, they probably want to come down. It's, win it's Wednesday. Things are a little tighter. Mini celebration between the four of you. There's a couple of bro hugs and congratulations. <laughs> and now I told them to go enjoy their day. Now we got to get on to real football. I have to get involved at the last minute. What's that? Did you ever think you'd have to get involved in this at the last minute or do you? Uh, not really. I mean, when I if I do, it's always just to talk to the player. Um, and I didn't have to do that, so glad. I got to go roll. Right. Thanks, man.